The last year has seen headlines of hope and outright fear around the rapid development of artificial intelligence, or AI. It leads to plenty of questions, including this. Does innovation lead to broad gains for everyone? Economics correspondent Paul Salman focused on the connections between technology and prosperity with one of the co-authors of a recent book. Spot the wonder dog, using AI to navigate tricky terrain. Already in service today at construction and manufacturing sites. And tomorrow? It could be something that helps workers be safer, helps them be more productive and therefore get a higher wage. Or the same spot could take people's jobs. So I think it's in the balance. In Power and Progress, economists Simon Johnson and Duran Asimoglu surveyed the history of technological progress and came to a sobering, if familiar, conclusion. Technology changes all the time, but it doesn't necessarily turn into shared prosperity. There's a few additional important steps that have actually been missing for a lot of human history. As in the Middle Ages. Take the medieval plow, for example, all the other improvements in agriculture uh, in Europe more than a thousand years ago. What we know is that productivity increased, but there was very little change in terms of the living conditions of ordinary folk. In the Industrial Revolution, textile tech. A power loom revolutionizing at a cost. When the Luddites are called machine breakers, these are the machines they're breaking. Yes, exactly. Looms like this at the Boston Manufacturing Company in Waltham, Massachusetts, were already displacing workers in England 200 years ago. When weaving became automated, all those people who had previously been handloom weavers, they got thrown out of work or, or they couldn't make much money. And the Luddites were really angry because it was the weavers who were making good money. Those opportunities eroded and nothing else sprang to take its place. So that, you know, this is not good for us, and, and they were right about that. Workers ditched, business owners enriched. We, we have a, a steam engine back here. On the other hand, sometimes technological progress did lead to shared prosperity. This would turn these wheels, drive the belts, and transfer the power throughout the whole system. And then if you want to use a particular machine... And so in fits and starts, the new factories of the 19th century prompted the long process of harnessing technology. They offered jobs to people who also didn't have a lot of education. They were more productive. Demand for labor goes up, wages go up, and trade unions show up and say, hey, how about we pay an extra wage or people have the weekend off? Put that together. Yes, you've got shared prosperity in the 20th century. Labor organizations, Johnson argues, were key to ensuring everybody shared in productivity gains. And so it remained for almost a century. But since about 1980, automation has outpaced the creation of shared prosperity jobs, says Johnson. People with a lot of education have done well. People with not that much education still have jobs, but the wages at the low end have not gone up, and we're missing now that middle, and we've been missing it for 40 years. So it's not an overnight phenomenon. Are we in a situation in which the trend you're so worried about will reverse? We have a lot of income inequality, wage inequality, and unions in the private sector are, are weak. They've had a little resurgence since COVID, uh, but not really very much. So into this environment, we now have AI arriving. AI could be a tool to rebuild the middle class, or it could be a way in which the middle class, the remains of it get hollowed out further. These are not real people. Artificial intelligence, today's technology frontier. A 2022 research study found that AI-generated faces are difficult to distinguish from human faces and are even considered more trustworthy. At the Exploring AI exhibit at Boston's Museum of Science, a car programmed by Toyota Research Institute scientists to assist drivers. The vision is not to replace human drivers. The vision is to make humans safer, better drivers. We do know there's 40 to 50,000 fatalities on the roads every year in the United States, and almost all of those are due to some form of human error. So the hope is that AI can reduce human error. The concern that AI will instead replace jobs, like taxi and truck drivers, or take this retail robot, for example. So this is an AI-enabled robot from Badger Technologies, goes through the store aisles looking to verify the prices and ensure that everything is properly stocked. So this is good for jobs or bad for jobs? Well, I think this one's bad for jobs, honestly, because you'd previously have a whole set of people working the night shift restocking the shelves. Suddenly laid off, they'd be competing for other lower-skill jobs, lowering wages. Same thing for drive through robots. There are fast food chains that have announced that they plan to replace all the human interaction here. So that entire order placing and order communication in the kitchen becomes automated by a form of AI. 
That's a, a lot of jobs. And plenty of much better paying jobs are also under threat from AI, even those of us who may have figured we were safe. Johnson first used the well, Chrome browser. We can search for you, Paul Solman, and we can get an AI-powered overview for the search. Are you sure you want to go there? Yeah, I'm fine. All right. Uh, you're American. You have brown hair. Okay. Uh, we'll <laughs> well, pass on that. Once um, upon a time. Build fit. I mean, we could just stop right there. And you, you have blue eyes. Well. I don't have blue eyes. Well, you probably lied to the DMV once. <laughs> okay. Not exactly reliable. But here's chat GPT. Write a script for Paul Solman of the PBS NewsHour. A script for this very story. Here's a suggested script. Good evening, I am Paul Solman reporting on a compelling new analysis that's stirring debate in economic circles. <laughs> it's good so far. Cut to a visual of the book cover or relevant imagery. The work, Power and Progress, by economists Doronos Samoglu and Simon Johnson, challenges conventional wisdom on the relationship between political power and economic development. And so it does. Uh, it's not bad for a first pass. <laughs> I would have put in a bit more about technology, personally, uh, some steam engines and a little bit of an industrial museum ambiance. Well, that's what we've added. Right, that's the human touch. And that's what Johnson is pushing, our power to harness the progress of technology in the service of shared prosperity. What policies do you put in place to get Spot to augment people's labor as opposed to replace it? Just like this kind of device was, was really sparked by DARPA, the, the research, advanced research uh, arm of the Department of Defense, when they were pushing for autonomous vehicles by having some grand challenges. You could have grand challenges where you challenge people to find ways to use these kinds of robots or AI in general to develop technologies that are useful for teachers, nurses, plumbers, electricians. As Toyota is doing, for example, but economy-wide. We've done it many times, World War II, after Sputnik, the Internet, Human Genome Project, COVID vaccines. The list goes on in terms of technologies d deliberately developed with government money and, and with social impetus, let's say. So this is uh, another task like that one. And with that thought, this story comes to a close, for which I might as well use ChatGPT's conclusion. This has been Paul Solman reporting for the PBS NewsHour. Back to you in the studio. <laughs> Please, as if a robot could ever replace the great Paul Solomon. You can watch more of our stories about the future of artificial intelligence online at pbs.org newshour.